this is Lydia from the Milndavie Pottery in Strathblane, Scotland. And in this film, I want to tell you about our clay at home scheme. You can buy a pack of clay from us, take it home to make what you would like to make. And the price includes bringing it back after it's bone dry and we will fire it for you. Here's what I made from one of our packs of clay. Uh, and if you want to glaze it, you can do. There's a separate video about glazing. You can also buy glaze from us, which includes the price of firing. But in this video, I want to show you how I made three of those items. So we've got here uh, this uh, saucer and a colourful plate and my tortoise. to start by talking about storing clay at home and if you've hired our basic kit you will have received with it uh, a wet box possibly like this. Uh, it's a box that has plaster in the bottom a couple of centimetres of the box and uh, what you do is you fill the box up with water, leave it for a minute or so so that it soaks into the plaster and then tip the excess water away uh, making sure that the plaster itself uh, is, is no longer wet but it will be retaining the moisture and then you can keep your clay in this box with the lid on, pack your clay up in something uh, like cling film for example um, uh, unless it's small pieces. Small pieces will just stay fine in this box but, but a large lump of clay will slowly dry out uh, unless you've packed it up into something airtight. We haven't really found a, a better solution than cling film, but it's not ideal. We certainly uh, think that if you're going to only keep your clay in this box for a day or two, that you probably don't need cling film at all. But if you do use cling film, be aware that after you have taken the cling film off your clay, a tiny layer of clay will be left on the cling film and that will dry instantly so that when you re-wrap your clay what you're doing is you're putting a layer of clay dust over the top of your wet clay and that is a really bad idea. You don't want to mix wet and dry clay together if you're going to be making things it, it's not, it doesn't work well. Now before we had these plaster boxes we used a different system uh, which was an ordinary uh, lock and lock style uh, box and we had these plastic racks which are uh, made for storing bacon in the fridge but they work very well for clay uh, and what we would do is we would put wet cotton wool under the rack, uh, put the rack in the box and put the clay on top. You probably can do it without the rack so long as you keep the wet cotton wool in the corners. We're not sure, we've never done that, but what you're trying to do is keep your clay in a moist atmosphere without actually getting it wet. If your clay does dry out, you can recycle it and we're going to put a completely separate video onto our YouTube channel about that. It's absolutely essential that you don't roll on your kitchen table because the clay will just stick. What matters most of all is that you roll on some fabric. The fabric stops the clay from sticking. Before we had these boards, we used to just use bits of pillowcase or sheeting and that would that will work fine. The only thing is you need to make sure that you're using a fabric that isn't fluffy. You don't want fibers uh, as you're rolling to be uh, left in the clay. So I've just rolled that clay and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the larger circle cutter of the two that are in our basic kit. This one is uh, 13 centimetres in diameter. So I'm going to make some patterns on my dish um, and now I'm going to cut out my circle. Even though my pattern uh, is circular, I've decided I'm not going to try and cut my pattern in the centre of the circle just be cutting with a knife which will work just as well but out of the cutter you need to press very gently so you don't spoil your pattern and centering the clay very carefully into the bowl before I begin to press it down make sure it looks like it's going to end up in the middle and then very gently 
very gently, but it's important to squash right down into the shape. Otherwise, you won't have as deep a dish as you might like to have. Okay, that's done. When you are rolling a bigger piece of clay, it's a good idea to peel it off and turn it round while you're doing it every so often. But do that very gently because if you stretch the molecules that are inside the clay in the wrong way, as it dries, they'll try to go back to where they think they should be. I have rolled a piece of clay and I have made sure that my paper plate will fit on it because I'm going to make a decorated plate. Uh, what I've done is I've taken a piece of paper that is the size of the plate. I've drawn a pattern. I think you can just about see that. I used a compass. You could have anything. You could have a page out of a colouring book for this technique. Um, the crucial thing is that you cut out your plate shape uh, before you get going. So now I'm going to put this down on the clay, just smooth it down so that um, it doesn't move around. And I've got a good old fashioned biro and I'm going to trace my pattern. Now it doesn't matter if you can't actually see the biro, don't go back over your lines just to see the biro because the paper's going to get thrown away. Don't press too hard, you're not trying to tear the paper, you're just wanting to dent the clay in the right place. So be careful you don't lean on the clay with your wrist while you're doing it, otherwise you'll get dents where you don't want them. The clay is wet and so the paper wrinkles a bit and you just have to do your best. It's not You're not going to do a perfect impression of your pattern. So now finish drawing it. I'm going to uh, cut my circle out, trying to put the knife down at this kind of angle so that I get a, f um, a kind of perpendicular edge. The clay cuts really easily. Okay, so I'm going to peel the paper off and then I'm going to tidy up the lines that I've dented. So that'll take a little bit of time, so I'll come back to you in a few minutes. So I've been drawing back over the lines with the end of this paintbrush. Uh, just got a few to finish. Have to go a bit gently and slowly so you don't ruin it. I could have just left it as it was, but um, I just wanted it to be uh, dented in a little bit more than I had done with the biro. As the clay makes the trenches, Little burrs come off, Take, pull them off your brush, clean your brush, uh, the end of your brush as you go along. But if you get any burrs left on the clay, I would recommend leaving them until the clay is a bit drier because trying to get them out, you'll end up gouging your clay and making dents where you don't want dents. That is my uh, decorative plate, but now I've got to take it off the board gently and put it onto the paper plate very gently because it's so stretchy when it's in this state and then I'm just going to get it as much into the center of this plate as I can okay and now I'm just squashing my edges in very gently you don't want to ruin your pattern and you don't want to stretch your clay too much if you don't squash right into the edges then it won't be plate like enough so after I've squashed into the edges then I'm going to squash out the rim now that's looking much more like a plate now that's great there is definitely some tidying to be done but not yet not until it's much drier so I'm going to leave this on this plate keeping an eye on it uh, for, for about six hours until it can hold its own weight and then I'll take it out to finish drying I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush and I'm going to draw a kind of um, circular brickwork, that's how I would describe it. So I've got concentric circles, the 
tortoise shell bricks. I'm now going to use my textured roller and gently go over that, trying not to uh, entirely take off the shape that I've made. Otherwise, that's a bit of a pointless activity. No, that's great. I can see my tortoise shell brickwork and my textured roller. And now uh, I've got a 13 centimeter cutter and I'm going to push my tortoise shell out very gently. Uh, I'm going to use a bowl from our kitchen because my paper plate bowls are um, not, the, not the right shape. I wanted something with more of a dome. The thing to remember is that you're going to turn your clay over and that's because it's upside down in the bowl. I don't have to squash it right to the bottom, just to the point that I feel that I've made a tortoise shape that I'm quite happy with. Now you can see uh, that where I've rolled it, I haven't rolled it very well and it's got lots of dents in it. When I'm squashing it into leg shape, I'm going to squash quite hard because I don't want these folds to create air bubbles. This isn't really the way you're meant to do it, but it's such a small piece that I'm going to be able to get away with it. But I'm giving it quite a decent squeeze to make sure that there's no air bubbles. So what I'm going to do now is try and make four tortoise legs that are all the same. So now I'm going to give him some little claws because I think that's what tortoises have at the end of their feet. When you're sticking the feet on, they're going to need to be up this way. We must use slip and score. So you start off with your scratchy tool, which for me is a cocktail stick today, and I'm going to score some uh, score lines on the bit of the foot that's going to stick on, and some score lines in the place on the shell where it's going to stick. And then I'm using a tiny pot of water, a tiny pot of water, just trying to get that into shot, not very good, and a, just a normal brush. When you brush water onto the clay, you've created slip when the clay changes colour and goes lighter. And that's, it's the slip that makes the clay stick. It acts like glue on clay. So I've put slip on the score lines on the tortoise shell and slips on the score lines on the tortoise foot. And then I've got to give it a decent squeeze. Might be ruining some of the texture on my tortoise shell, but I can mend that later. Okay. With my fingers, I'm just going to squeeze it a bit and that creates the side of its head. And in the side of its head, I'm going to stick eyes. Okay. And at the end of its face, two little nostrils and a mouth. Now, who would not realise that that was a tortoise? To stick it on, I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to have to put the scoring at the top of its head. And here. On the bowl. And then the slip. and give it a decent squeeze so that it really doesn't fall off. Uh, I'm going to leave it for about an hour. I'm going to put a ball of newspaper inside the tortoise, which will help it to keep its shape when I take it out of the bowl, because I don't want the feet of the tortoise to have to take its weight. It's very, very floppy. Poor tortoise. Here we go. Ready? And... Oh, I think he's surviving. We're okay. All right. I'll peel the paper off. Oh, he's very tortoise-like. Okay. I'm going to put him down uh, on a flat surface just for a short while so I can sort his feet out and then put him back on his resting place to dry. So he's kept his newspaper in there. And actually he's quite... 
he's just about right, I think. Anyway, I'm going to put him back on his perch now because I really want him not to put his weight on his feet while he dries. So he's a bit skewiff, but I think he's all right. So there we have him. Tortoise. He's going to dry like that for more than six hours before I move him. As your clay dries, it gets more and more fragile. And once it's bone dry, it's really easily broken. I honestly didn't tap very hard with that. So uh, don't worry, I'm going to recycle this. It's not wasted clay. But I just want to be really clear about how fragile dry clay is. And you just want to be very careful with it when you're carrying it to us. Treat it like a fragile autumn leaf. Don't wrap it up in bubble wrap. Put it on a tray where it's not touching anything else and be careful with it because it will just break like that. So we all know how fragile dry clay is, but nevertheless, you may want to do a tiny bit of tidying so that your uh, finished pottery will look fantastic. What I've got here is a saucer um, that has been drying for a week. Uh, it may be dry all the way through, but it may be that deep inside it's not quite dry yet, and that's why we're going to leave it another week before it goes in the kiln. And uh, it looks pretty good, but just round the edges, it's a little bit jaggy. And what I know is that when this has been fired in the kiln and those jaggy edges get really hard, they'll be sharp and uncomfortable to touch. So what I'm going to do is run a tiny bit of sandpaper around the edge, hardly at all, being very gentle with it, but just to smooth these edges off. Now, uh, there's a safety precaution, which is that the dust that is created by doing that has a lot of silica in it, and silica is really bad for your lungs. So we highly recommend that you wear a mask when you do this. With every bit of sanding, you're running the risk of breaking your beautiful pottery. So be careful. I'm gonna use my fingernail to tidy up some of these bits because uh, it's kind of the easiest way to get into the grooves. Uh, there's not much that I want to sort out on here, but just where there are edges that are um, standing up a bit, what I know is that when they're fired in the kiln uh, and the clay is suddenly much harder, those edges will be kind of uncomfortably hard and a bit sharp. So let's see how that is. Don't blow the dust clay dust very bad for you. Just brush it off with a brush and see if you're happy with that. Can you see these little tiny kind of um, rice shaped burrs that have ended up uh, on the surface? They're where I was uh, making my pattern and little lumps of clay got left behind and I didn't want to deal with them while the clay was wet because I was just going to gouge out pattern where I had not wanted pattern but now that the clay is dry actually they come off quite easily if you do this I mean you need to kind of get in the right place with your fingernail just to take them off but you can see already that they're going they're not difficult to do just be careful that you don't scratch where you don't want to scratch when you feel that you've finished that job, run your finger across all the pattern and just make sure that there's nothing kind of sticking up, which when the clay is fired and gets hard, uh, any little lumps that stick up could end up being really sharp and uncomfortable. So when you're happy with it, I'm just going to focus on the edge now. I'm gonna use a bit of sandpaper. Remember to be very careful about the dust, but you can see how jaggy and um, unfortunate this edge is. Uh, and it will just be a lot nicer if I can have that smoothed and a bit rounded. Remember to turn your plate over um, and just see if there's any bits that you need to sort that are on the bottom edge. Don't blow it. Remember the clay dust rules. Um, but a soft brush will do just to take it off. 
I'm going to leave it for another week to dry to be certain that although it's dry on the outside, deep inside it, it may not be entirely dry. So here's my gorgeous tortoise. Uh, I'm wearing a mask and I'm being very fully aware of how fragile he is because he's been drying now for a week and I'm just going to tidy up a few bits and pieces. He's slightly wiggly on his feet and to be honest it's so slight that I'm not too bothered by that. I don't think you'd really notice it when it's on a shelf but what I could do if I wanted to spend the time is I could work out which leg because I think it's just one leg here at the back that is a little bit too long and I could just sand a bit off that at this point. This is the last opportunity to do something about it. Make sure that there's no kind of little lumps or bits that when it's fired, see here there's a tiny burr, not much. You can just rub it off with your fingernail gently. Um, when it's fired, all of the, the lumps will become harder uh, and much less comfortable to touch because of that. But you see this edge underneath of his shell. What I want to do is take a little bit of sandpaper and just uh, take that off, being very careful. These bits that have been um, slipped and scored and stuck on, uh, they're particularly precarious. They won't be safe on there until after they've been glazed. So I don't want to um, put them under any pressure and knock them off. You know, if one of his legs falls off, you could try sticking it back on with some slip, but it's destined to not go well, to be honest, because of the rate at which clay shrinks as it dries. If you introduce wet clay onto dry clay, it's really never a good thing. So I'm taking a tiny bit off the leg that was a bit too long, just to make it slightly better, but I'm not, I'm not going to sand for ages and take that risk. I think I'm happy with that doesn't really matter what it looks like on the on the inside because that won't show when it's on your shelf. I mean, don't blow this dust away. Put it in the bin. Don't put it down your sink. So here's everything that I made with our clay pack and by the magic of editing here's what happened after 24 hours in the kiln and what you'll notice is that it's all much whiter but there's another change that is actually more important, which is that everything has become much harder and more solid. So I wouldn't dare do this, and actually it wouldn't sound like this if it had not been fired. But although, of course, it is still breakable, in comparison to unfired clay, it's just much stronger. to paint three coats of glaze, let each coat dry and then paint the next one and don't paint the bottom 